This is completely BS. This is shame. Shame for the referees. Shame for the league to allow this. In the, in the fourth quarter, 23 free throws for them, and we get two free throws. I understand respect for all stars and all that, but we have star players on our team as well. How's possible is Scotty Barnes, who is all star caliber player in this league? He goes to the rim with force and trying to get get uh, to to the rim without flopping and and not trying to get foul calls. He gets two free throws for the whole game. How's that possible? How are you gonna explain it that, that to me? They had to win tonight. If that's the case, just let us know so we don't show up for the game. Just give them a win. But that, that was not fair tonight. Scotty Barnes is going to be all-star. He's going to be the face of this league. And what, what's happening over here during the whole season, I've been holding it back. It's a complete crap. That offensive foul, did you get any explanation? No, no, there is no explanation. They just, they just come up there, they review what, and they see what they want to see. They don't want to hear us what we got to say. Over the game, they got 36 free throws, 23 free throws in the fourth quarter. What are we talking about? How are we going to supposed to play? But I'm telling our guys, be professional, keep fighting, keep going for the next one. But until when? For how long? Even without the intentional fouls factored in during the final minute, the Lakers still had a 17-2 advantage on the Raptors in fourth quarter free throws, and you know whether you're a fan of either team, if you were watching this one in the fourth, that every call was going the Lakers' way down the stretch. As Darko highlighted in a rant for the ages, it's not like this insane charity stripe disparity came from the Raptors not attacking. That attacking continued deep into the game, making this next fact increasingly egregious. In the last four minutes, the Lakers' 19-0 advantage at the line over the Raptors was the largest shutout of free throw attempts down the stretch of any NBA game in 13 years. The plus 21 free throw differential was the largest differential in any quarter in the NBA this season as rigged along with a number of NBA topics were trending on Twitter. We'll get to the brutal review system that needs to have a time limit along with Ben Taylor, but the most inexcusable part about this game from an officiating standpoint was the clear bias. It was just 13-11 for the Lakers in total free throws entering the fourth quarter before they were gifted 23 in the final frame, while the Raptors were gifted just two. And while free throw discrepancy on the surface doesn't mean anything, Toronto had 70 more points in the paint than Los Angeles, signaling their lack of referee benefit of the doubt had nothing to do with a lack of aggressiveness. The Raptors also outplayed the Lakers in every aspect, Yet, LA was rewarded one blasphemous whistle after the next, and Toronto was playing 5-on-8 with Ben Taylor stepping up as the Kia game MVP. As a Raptor fan, Fred Van Vliet's tenure ended on a rough note, but both he and I can agree that Ben Taylor was fucking terrible. NBA scriptwriters had no choice but to acknowledge the snail-esque timing of BT to take forever reviewing one call after the next on the monitor, as the crypto faithful in LA would start MVP chance for Taylor, as he was cooking, non-sarcastically. I've been watching basketball for a long time now, and when watching the Laker feed of this game, saw a clip of LeBron going to complain to the officials at halftime. Once I saw this, I would jump on Twitter to make one of my most accurate predictions in bare time. I would make my prediction that the refs might be impossible to beat in the second half, which would sickeningly be way too accurate. I guess I know ball. That's a humble brag. <laughs> The review system needs to be limited to 30 seconds to a minute because it's absolutely ridiculous that these beauties in Secaucus need not merely an entire commercial break but extra minutes after it looking over and over at what should be a snappy decision. It's just pathetic how long it takes to review calls. It makes the games unwatchable and along with harping on unbiased officiating, the review system also needs a ton of work. To be fair to other refs, Ben Taylor in particular might be the worst referee I've ever seen, as he's extremely biased, which I'll get into in a second, but Taylor specifically takes the longest on reviews of any crew chief in the NBA. Last night, it embarrassingly took the entire commercial break and legit another 3-5 to five minutes for Ben to figure out the ruling with officials he was on the phone with in Secaucus. Man enjoys his airtime, but also in terms of the review system, Oftentimes, throughout the league as a whole, the calls after the reviews have been flat wrong. Just take what happened to the Boston Celtics. This was only a night before the Raptors debacle. After this Jalen Brown shot from the baseline was initially called a foul, the Pacers challenged it. Following a look at the monitor, the evidence seems to clearly display Jalen gets hit on the head. 
However, the calls blasphemously overturned. On that play, they may have been watching the ball too much instead of Buddy Heald's arm, which clearly smacked Brown in the back of the head. And it's no wonder bad calls from Secaucus, New Jersey are being made. Once you find out the people, or should I say person, in the review system deciding the calls that go to the monitor. While former official Kane Fitzgerald is the vice president of referee operations and replay center principal, the NBA's official website lists the man in charge of calls in Secaucus as Pete Williams, who was never even a ref. Homeboy Pete, along with Kane Fitzgerald, are the only two men responsible for the terrible calls coming out of New Jersey. A man with zero pro experience officiating games, making every review decision, I think signifies the dysfunction in the National Basketball Referees Association. In general, it's no wonder we have bad refs being brought up when the Referee Development Performance Advisory features former corrupted NBA officials who from my memory as a fan were biased refs in their day. For the GOAT Ben Taylor, in their officiating biographies while most stayed unbiased, well actually Clay Thompson may want to attack the basket in Josh Tiven ref games, but Ben Taylor's bio states his most memorable career moment is being the ref for a LeBron James game where he set his career high in scoring. I don't even have to get into how much of an issue it is that refs are now stands of certain players. There also seems to be zero accountability given almost everyone listed as a front office official is in anywhere from their 8th to 49th seasons in that same position. In terms of the biased officiating, from Barnes getting bodied then whacked on the wrist but nothing being called, to Reeves flailing his head back plus hooking his arm with defenders to sell initiated lean in contact which was ruled illegal three years ago, to AD flopping like a fish but the refs ignoring the flopping technical foul rule, to Barrett cleanly swiping this away from Christie but the refs calling a ghost foul, it was an utter disaster all around. What the bloody hell was that? Let me know your thoughts on the awful officiating down below. What can the NBA do to change this? What pissed you off the most? Two shoutouts from my last upload and this one next time. DFlow signing off.